Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Shivangi Mishra. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you. India's PM Modi says decade before 2014 will be remembered as the lost decade. Heavy taxes on food items cause trouble to consumers and traders in Balochistan. And Sri Lanka's president prescribes bitter pill for economic revival. And now for all the details. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Wednesday hit out at Opposition Congress Party by saying that the decade before 2014 will be remembered as the lost decade, as he replied to the motion of thanks on the President's address in the Parliament. Both houses witnessed chaos amid the speech as opposition lawmakers targeted the government over the Adani Row, inflation and unemployment among other issues. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Wednesday said the decade before 2014 when the Congress party ruled the country will always be remembered as the lost decade while the decade of 2030 will be known as India's decade as he lashed out at the opposition during his reply to the motion of thanks on the President's address in the Parliament. The Parliament witnessed chaos amid the speech as opposition lawmakers targeted the government over the Adani Row, inflation and unemployment. PM Modi said at a time when top economies are reeling with post-COVID losses, the world is looking at India with hope and confidence as it heads the G20. On India's contribution to climate change and energy-saving goals, he said, in renewable energy usage, India stands in fourth position. The PM hitting out at Congress said, I have been waiting for the last nine years to get some constructive criticism that could get the country going. But this opposition only practices when data politics and blame game. Adaniya Dek Jis Baat Ko Hindustan Har Pal Yad Rakhe Ga Ki 2014 Ke Pahle Ka Jo Dasak Tha The Lost Decade Ke Rup Me Jana Jaya Ga Or Is Baat Ko Inkar Nahi Kar Sakte Ki 2030 Ka Jo Dasak Hai India's decade has. The opposition parties have been holding daily protests demanding a joint parliamentary probe into the Adani Group after a report by US-based short-seller Hindenburg Research accused it of stock manipulation and misuse of tax havens. Congress party leader Rahul Gandhi said he is not satisfied with the PM's speech as he did not talk about any inquiry. The Adani Group has denied wrongdoing but that has failed to arrest the unabated fall in its shares. The group's chairman, billionaire Gautam Adani, and India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi are from the same state. Adani has denied allegations by Modi's opponents that he had benefited from their close ties, and Modi's government has denied allegations of favouring Adani. The Reserve Bank of India hiked its key repo rate by 25 basis points on Wednesday as expected, but surprised markets by leaving the door open to more tightening, saying core inflation remained high. The Central Bank's Monetary Policy Committee raised the key lending rate, or the repo rate, to 6.50% in a split decision. RBI Governor Shaktikan Das said, we have to remain unwavering in our commitment to bring down the headline inflation. He added that the Indian economy looks resilient even through considerable uncertainties remain on global commodity prices. The Indian government bond yields ended higher on Wednesday after the RBI announcement. Reports suggested traders will now brace for heavy debt supply over the next two days, as the central government is set to raise 80 billion rupees through green bonds on Thursday and 300 billion rupees through debt sale on Friday. In news from Pakistan, former President of Pakistan Parvez Musharraf was laid to rest in his hometown Karachi on Tuesday with full military honours. The former military ruler, who was living in self-imposed exile since 2016, passed away on Sunday in Dubai after a prolonged illness. 
Pakistan's former president Parvez Musharraf was laid to rest on Tuesday in his hometown Karachi with full military honors. Musharraf, who breathed his last in Dubai at the age of 79, was living in self-imposed exile in the Gulf country since 2016 and was suffering from a rare organ disease. The funeral was held at Malir Cantonment's polo ground where his supporters gathered and raised slogans praising the former military ruler. Serving and former army officers including former army chiefs Kamar Javed Bajwa and Ashfaq Parvez Kiani and members of Karachi-based Mutaida Qaumi Movement political party also attended the funeral. However, President Arif Alvi, Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif and current army chief general Asim Munir did not attend. वो जो हमारे लिए शफीक था जो हमारे मुल्क के लिए सोचता था जो हमारे मुल्क के लिए मोहब्बत करता था जिसने बेसिक सारे मामला को डॉलर को 60 से आगे हिलने नहीं दिया था और हमारे अकाउंट्स बेहतरीन अंदाज में छोड़ के गया था आज हम गरीब तरीन हमारा हर बच्चा लाखों में मकरूज है हर बच्चा पैदा होने वाला बच्चा मकरूज पैदा हो रहा है Musharraf has been a controversial figure of Pakistan. Born in pre-partitioned India, he had moved to Pakistan with his family at the age of four. He joined the Pakistan Army and went on to become its army chief in 1998. Musharraf took over the reins of power from the then Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif in a bloodless coup. During his rule, he was credited with attracting foreign investments to Pakistan which saw the strongest economic growth in nearly 30 years and enjoyed the support of the military and Pakistanis who backed his crackdown against militant groups. However, Musharraf was also renowned for his heavy-handed approach to dissent. More on news from Pakistan. People in Pakistan's Balochistan province continue to face the brunt of high inflation and heavy taxes, with basic items like onion becoming expensive for them. Traders say they forced to increase prices as they are in heavy losses and demanded the government to remove taxes to bring the price down. People in Balochistan province of Pakistan have continued to face the brunt of heavy taxes on food and essential items. With many complaining, basic items like onions have become too expensive for them amid the ongoing economic crisis. A trader in Quetta city said they have to pay 6 lakhs rupees alone as taxes for a single trailer of onion import. After such heavy taxation, they are facing loss of 20 to 25 rupees per kilogram, he added. He expressed concern that importers are demanding remuneration in dollars, which the traders are unable to provide. The import coming from sea is stranded at ports as they demand dollars, he said. Meanwhile, International Rights Organization, Human Rights Watch, has warned Pakistan will not get any relief even after unlocking funds from International Monetary Fund. In a statement, it said Pakistan is facing one of the worst economic crises in its history, jeopardizing millions of people's rights to health, food and an adequate standard of living. Pakistan is facing its highest inflation levels since 1975 with the cost of perishable food items rising more than 60% in January. The rights body has proposed IMF should work with Pakistan's government to protect the economically disadvantaged by broadening social protection systems and minimizing reform measures that risk further harm to the most vulnerable people. Sri Lanka's President Ranil Vikramasinghe told the parliament on Wednesday that the crisis-hit island nation's economy is expected to grow again from the end of this year and the government wants it to exit bankruptcy by 2026. He said they can turn around the economy if Sri Lankans tolerated high direct taxes for another six months. Sri Lanka's economy is expected to grow again from the end of this year and the government wants the crisis-hit country to exit bankruptcy by 2026, President Ranil Vikramasinghe told Parliament on Wednesday. 
The crisis has forced the island nation to default on loans and seek a $2.9 billion bailout from the International Monetary Fund. In a special policy statement, Vikramasinghe said the government could turn around the economy if Sri Lankans tolerated high direct taxes for another six months. He said the aim was to reduce inflation to single digits by the end of the year. We have now been able to increase the foreign reserves which had fallen to zero up to $500 million, he said. Sri Lanka's official reserves reached $2.1 billion at the end of January, which is the highest it has been in about a year, latest central bank data showed. The reserves include a $1.5 billion swap from China People's Bank which Sri Lanka has been unable to tap, as it requires the island to have three months' worth of reserves. Sri Lanka's key inflation rate, the Colombo Consumer Price Index, eased to 54.2% in January, from 57.2% in December. The recent hikes in income taxes have hit salaried workers hard, with trade unions and private sector professionals staging protests in Colombo, the country's largest city. Obeda Sharat who is among the 19 Afghan female prosecutors who have found asylum in Spain, says she now feels safe in the European nation. However, she feels concerned for Afghan women back home who are suffering in the Taliban-ruled country. A report. Having a stroll on hilltop overlooking Madrid with her family on a sunny winter's day, Former Afghan prosecutor Obeda Sharar expresses relief that she found asylum in Spain after fleeing Afghanistan shortly after the Taliban takeover. Sharar, who arrived in Madrid with her family, is one of 19 female prosecutors to have found asylum in the European country after being left in limbo in Pakistan without official refugee status for up to a year after the Taliban's takeover. Sharar, who specialized in gender violence as a prosecutor during the democratic rule in Afghanistan, says she feels safe in Spain, but she cannot enjoy her new life knowing her fellow Afghan women are suffering back in Taliban-ruled country. I am free. Here I am safe. I can go anywhere. I can wear any kind of dress that I want. I can do anything that I want. But there are lots of women women in Afghanistan and they, they are sentenced to be inside their houses, inside the walls and this is not still I cannot enjoy from my life because, because the women in my country, they are not free, they cannot do anything. Sharar's work and her female peers while they lived in Afghanistan, were threatened and became the target of revenge attacks after the Taliban takeover. Women's freedoms in Afghanistan were abruptly curtailed in 2021 with the arrival of a government that enforces a strict interpretation of Islam. The Taliban administration has also banned most female aid workers and last year stopped women and girls from attending high school and university. An exhibition featuring photographs, books and other material related to different bird species in India's Kashmir Valley attracted a large number of nature lovers this week. The event aimed to educate people about the importance of nature and the tremendous role the birds play to keep the ecosystem in balance. A two-day-long photo exhibition depicting birds attracted a large number of visitors in Srinagar city of India's Jammu and Kashmir this week. The event, organized by the Birds of Kashmir organization, in collaboration with the government authorities, aimed to educate people about the importance of nature and the value of birds, the tremendous role they play to balance the ecosystem. Despite this severe cold, nature-loving youngsters and the old alike strong the exhibition and enjoy the photographs to gain more knowledge about the bird species in the region. So, a lot of response has come, people are coming, they are And mainly, this exhibition was the purpose of that promote citizen science. So, in the biggest thing citizen science, people are coming, they are coming. Set against breathtaking natural beauty, regional wetlands and freshwater lakes in Kashmir, including Hokarsar and Hekam, are home to hundreds of bird species. 
These places also attract winged visitors from Siberia, Central Asia and Northern Europe every year adding colors and vibrancy with their chirping to the valley. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now, our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianNewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianNewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.